this stuff a finding area underneath the derivative, the rate? A dude came up with it. I know that makes you excited, right? And that dude was Riemann. That's him right there. He's, he's not around anymore, though. So basically, all this is saying is you have a continuous function. And remember, that function is a derivative. We're looking at some type of an interval where we divide it up in these subdivisions. And I could either get the number of subdivisions, because I could switch those, right? That's called algebra. Or I can get the change of t, which are the length, okay, of the sub of the sub intervals, by taking the entire interval. So this was like the 20 minus 0, 1 divided by 4. Or I guess that would move move this over here to get 5 for n. And this is just stating these are the actual endpoints. So this looks a little crazy, but this big E just means to add up a bunch of stuff. What are you adding? The height of the function. Remember, f of t would be your y, your height, and your change of t is the width. So all this is saying is that we're going to simply start at 0, and then we're going to stop 1 over. Notice we kind of been doing that in our table. And we're going to take each one of these areas of the rectangles. I mean, that's what's happening here. That's what this actually means. The height times the width. The next one, the height times the width and so on. Um, a lot of times these are can also be called like a left-hand sum because notice the left corner of your rectangle is what's touching uh, your actual rate function. If you have a right hand, notice that shows over here. Now, don't try to memorize things like as a left hand and overestimate. Well, it is in this example because the function is decreasing. But if the function was increasing, a left endpoint would actually be an underestimate. All right, and we've done some examples of those. And so notice the big key here, though, is just showing that are we either starting at the very first value, which we did, uh-oh, hello, which we did at the left end point, are we starting at the next value at the right end point? So, for example, if I asked you, is this a left or a right hand sum? I hope you said it's a left hand sum. Why? Because that left hand corner is touching. Is this an upper or a lower estimate? I don't know. I don't understand what's going on here. It's below the rate, so it's definitely a lower estimate. Okay, it's actually below. What is the value of n? I have no freaking clue what n is, right? n is the number of subintervals, or I just always say the number of rectangles. I think there's three. So one, two, three subintervals. What's the value of the change of t? Well, I got a freaking x there. It should be a t, huh? <laughs> if this is 9 and I jumped by 3s, 3, 6, 9, then the width of each rectangle would be 3. So what we're doing is approximations. Okay, this left-hand sum, this right-hand sum is an approximation. I hope you're thinking this has got to get better. Okay, I don't want to keep counting a bunch of freaking rectangles and find an area. And we will, and how we will do that is with calculus. The horns go off by this approximation by letting n go to infinity. So that's where we will be going next. It's just first you learn Riemann sums as this approximation, and then we'll figure out how to get exact area.